Hi, and welcome to the Art Splash podcast, where we will have open and playful and also meaningful and thought-provoking conversations about art, creativity, life and spirituality. Hello, and welcome to our podcast. I'm Joy Fay, And I'm Eve Marie Whitson-Jones. And um, we're going to have an interesting conversation today, I hope. <laughs> Uh, I've just finished doing a three-day art walk exhibition in our village, which is an annual event, which brings lots and lots of people um, into the village and lots of artists. There were over 50 artists oh, wow. starting this year, which was fantastic. You know, a real nice um, eclectic mix of all kinds of painting and sculpture and uh, photography. and. Um, I was in, we were sort of allocated different places in the in the village. Yeah. And um, my spot this year was in a chapel. <laughs> yes, I saw that because it looked like you yeah. were in the church when I saw the photos yeah. of where you had hung your work. Yeah. So there's above all our paintings, there's all these religious uh, pictures. <laughs> and and under my, under, uh, on top of my big picture, my kind of pied de resistance picture. In fact, it's the one that's behind me now. Yeah. Unfortunately, it didn't sell. But anyway, oh. I'll tell you about that in a minute. Um, <laughs> I've got a whole picture of Christ. <laughs> so it made me laugh. I'm either blessed or I'm cursed. I don't know. <laughs> Well, I, I choose to believe that you were blessed. Well, I hope so. But it was extraordinary because some people would come in and there were a lot of people um, from all over the world. You know, there's a lot of visitors and people on holiday, on vacation. And so there's a wonderful collection of people. Um, and obviously a lot of Spanish people were, were there, which was uh, great but many people would come in and not look at our pictures I was sharing it with a, a another artist a lovely lady called um, Rosanna and we were laughing together because they would come in not look at our paintings at all but just be looking at, Up, the, at the religious paintings <laughs> yeah, the religious, and then they're, they're so painful you know Christ on the cross and the da -da -da and the Virgin yeah. Mary and all this that and the other and you know very somber and whatever and um, we would just laugh because they'd come in they'd look all around here at the top <laughs> turn around and walk out again oh <laughs> And then obviously others would completely ignore that and just come and look at our painting. Yes, yes, okay. It's what's a strange juxtapos juxtaposition, isn't it, though, of the two? It's, it's really weird. Yes, yeah. it was strange. Yeah. I mean, I'd asked initially when we went to have a look at it, you know, please, could they move them? And they said, no. <laughs> no, no, I wouldn't imagine they would do that. No. that would be um, but it was a very strange, um, you know, a combination of these really severe religious paintings and our <laughs> kind of con contemporary abstract stuff. You know? was, was the other lady's artwork also abstract? Yeah, she yeah. she was doing, you know, abstract landscapey stuff. And we were very complimentary. It was lovely. Oh, good. And good. Um, we had some fun. It was good. <laughs> but it's so interesting watching people coming and looking at art because you know the last um podcast that i did yeah uh, you know because you were you were busy was on looking at art oh yes right. and one yes. one of the statistics when i was doing the research for that um for that uh, podcast was to uh, discover that the look time at a painting on average statistically is eight seconds mm. right mm. so i was kind of you know thinking about this as people were walking in <clears throat> and were you I guess <laughs> I, I, well I was I was kind of observing what they did yeah and in true to form I mean they would just kind of look and then look and then look and then look 
and you know walk, and then gone yeah and then gone so there was actually there were, obviously there were a, 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 not a lot but there were a number of people that would study the paintings um, and particularly my collage paintings because mm. they're so they're different mm -hmm. and you know I would have if they were looking at it long enough I would go and have a chat with them and, explain, and yeah. talk to them about it and all this that and the other which was lovely yeah um and so there was quite a lot of attention on looking at at those but you know in in the um in that podcast you know when I'm talking about how to divide it up into like a menu yeah so you know where you start and 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 main, main course, course and, yes and yes third, as it were um to actually feel something about the painting when you're mm. looking at it what what do you get from it so you know one assumes that if they don't spend time in front of it then they're not getting anything from it mm. <laughs> But for those people who take the time, you know, there's a there's a resonance. It's in it's really very, very interesting to observe. And how really I would say the majority never took time. No, no. And you think you know, it's because in those eight seconds or less, um, mm. if they're not getting some kind of um, an impact on them, in, you know, they're, mm. it's not striking them in some way, then they're not motivated to, you know, stay longer and look at it more deeply. It, it, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And, the, 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 and, you know, going back to the religious stuff, what was so interesting to, to kind of observe what people are seeing mm, yes <laughs> and what they like and what what does have an impact on them and it's an observation I haven't kind of studied the audience in that way before but because it was kind of quite fresh in my mind uh having done the research of it for the you know last week um it was really really fascinating mm -hmm. <laughs> Um, and I got some good comments, very positive comments from some people um, where, you know, somebody said, oh, there's a lovely harmony in your paintings, oh, which, okay. is, which is a really nice, you know, a, a good observation. Right. But nobody, very few people commented. I'd, I put a little card up saying what the, the, the paintings were about. Was it? It was about the 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 mystique of the sky and the mountains and the landscape of Andalusia, yeah. where I live. You know, because right. I'm surrounded by all these beautiful mountains and and the you know well all the Valley. olive groves yeah. and the mangoes and the fields and the sea. It's it's so dramatic, and you know the mist that we get that yes. comes down over the mountains and all that kind of thing which is what I try to capture in my paintings but so few people ask me about it hmm. which again I found so interesting and and then it begs the question what are they there for <laughs> yeah, yeah that is a good question you know, what's yeah. enticing them to come to an exhibition of you know all over through the village other than maybe coming to see the village, which is true, uh, yes, know, yes, the yeah. second prettiest village in Spain, so it's yeah. got a a wonderful history to it. Um, it just gave me kind of a different insight into what people are looking for and what their motivation is, and you know, when it comes to selling and and people buying, what it is that you know floats their boat yeah as it were. <laughs> so you said you sold one painting yeah I sold a, a paint a, well, I, in fact it was an abstract painting that I'd had in in last year's exhibition ah, okay and I because I did it in two sections I did the Andalusia series and then I did the abstract series and I got lots of little paintings and some other things that I'd got from from, from previously and uh, she was from Holland mm -hmm. and she spent time looking and then, you know, I was talking to her and she was saying, I'd really love this, but um, how am I going to get it back home? Because she oh. was on holiday. 
Yeah. And it's actually, it's it, it was framed. It was on watercolour paper framed. <clears throat> so I said, well, I can I can take it out of the frame and send it to you. Mm -hmm. And then you can frame it when you get home. And she said, well, can you do that? I said, yes, I can. <laughs> okay, okay. So that's how that came about. And then um, the commissions, that was really extraordinary. Talk about the universe doing wonderful cartwheels and somersaults <laughs> yeah yeah um i i'll tell you the story because it's it's fascinating i you know i have all this the problems with my back which i don't talk about very much but i've been in agony the last week or so with my oh, back because i've been working so much doing you know standing up looking down doing all the stuff that i needed to do and um I've got some really sort of strong painkillers. But anyway, I thought I'm going to go to the osteopath. And the osteopath lives in Marbella, mm -hmm. which is an hour and a half away from me. But I've been seeing her for 10 years. So yeah, I trust her. Yeah. And I thought, right, I'm going to phone her so I can organize it to go next week after the exhibition. So and she said, yeah, great, fine. Come on Tuesday at two o'clock. Great. Literally within half an hour, this couple walked in. They looked at that big painting that's behind me and they said, oh, that's fantastic. Um, we want um, two, um, half that size for our villa. Can you do it? Oh, I kind of went, oh, I mean, literally that that was the conversation. And I kind of looked, I said, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I said, where do you live? Yeah. And they said, oh, we live in Alveria in Marbella, which oh. is where the osteopath is. Right. And they said, can you come to the villa and have a look at the space? Oh, <laughs> wow. So I guess that's where you're going tomorrow, right? So I'm going to go to the osteopath at 2, and I'm going to go and see them at 3.30. Oh, fantastic. <laughs> well, that's great. But it was just like... Da, 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 da. Yes, know, yes. Know, like, like, just suddenly it all went whoosh. I so, thought you were going to tell uh, me that 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 um, one of the two, one of the couple was an osteopath or something, and offered <laughs> to help you on the spot. <laughs> <laughs> but isn't it weird? Isn't yeah. that amazing? Yeah. So um, that was like I was going. Well, oh, well, thank you, thank you, universe. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Oh, that's good. So you don't have to make two trips. Obviously, that's. I don't really have useful. to make two trips. Yeah, uh, but yeah. it was so decisive. I mean, mm. you know, this is kind of such the interesting thing that that, you know, obviously um, all these people coming and, you know, people just walking by. But there are there are some paintings that absolutely resonate. Yeah. That somebody goes, I want that. That's what I want. Yeah. Did yeah. you find that because um, I'm sure and as you mentioned to me um, before we started talking that there were quite a few artists that came to see. Um, yeah. obviously everybody you know not just yours but you know just in, mm. in general um did you find that they were spending longer what looking yes at your artwork, and and, yeah. and because they were spending time I had a conversation I always you know my question is do you paint yes yes and um you know on the these occasions yes we do so we had some really interesting conversations and one of the fun, you know, we've, we've talked about this a lot in, in the various podcasts, that somehow people seem to feel embarrassed to say that they paint. Oh, really? Yeah. Because they're not, you know, they're not a, a professional. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. I paint, I paint a little. I paint, mm. you know, just a bit or I go to a class sometimes. I'm not very good, but I go and I, I really enjoy. It. And that's kind of a really that stood out to me because mm. nearly not ev all of them, but nearly all of them had that mindset of feeling timid to say mm. they paint. Yeah, yeah. You know? and yeah. I, why? Why is that? Anyway, so, you know, within the conversation, I was saying, you know, what kind of thing do you do and blah, 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 blah. And, um, you know, then obviously I talked a little bit about, um, you know, my classes. Yes. And, because actually on my on my info, on my bio, it's got, you know, I'm an art visual artist and teacher. Right. So we could have some nice conversations about that. So quite a few of them think, oh, you know, 
I can do an online course and I'm saying ah, yeah, yeah yeah of course yeah and um you know I was saying I've got a free mini course that you can take and see how you get on with it and if you enjoy it then you can go on and do more and you know I have people all over the world and we have a, a membership group so you never having to feel on your own mm-hmm. and uh, we have a you know nice facebook group and master classes every month and you know you can feel part of something and uh, so that was really interesting that was quite a lot of people probably i don't know 15 people oh right um, so yeah that that was also an extra you know yes, plus yes, yes. to the exhibition um and then, of course, you know, a lot of them were asking me how I'd done this and with the with the collage and stuff and the, talked about jelly printing and oh, lovely, yeah. you know, um, all that kind of thing. So um, that was lovely. But the mindset of feeling hesitant to say, you know, that they painted really fascinated me because it's... Yeah. I mean, I, I think I share the same the same um, issue is that I think that I don't know, there's there's um, a reluctance to to label oneself as an artist or a painter because it's not something that I think other, you know, other than yourself, you know, you, you're 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 you know, what I would call a professional because you're selling your artwork, you've got your art in exhibitions mm. and you're doing all these, you know, wonderful online classes and so on. Um, so you're kind of a recognized artist, you know, but the rest of us who are just dabbling or as you call them, like a hobby artist, it's like we're not mm. fully, we haven't fully owned it yet. And, you know, we're working up to it, but I don't know, you know, I'm not quite sure what the tipping point is <laughs> to actually say, yes, I'm an artist. Yes, I can do this, or I have done this, or whatever. Um, and I don't know why it doesn't apply to other things. Like, I mean, you know, we all yes. cook, right? You all, you know, not yeah. all of us, but most of us, you know, do some form of cooking in the kitchen. And uh, mm. some of us are better at it than others, but we all can say, oh, yes, I cook. You know, I'm not a chef, but I cook. And we yeah. don't have hesitancy to say that. So I don't know. It's kind of a funny. It's so interesting, isn't it? You know, why not say, well, I I really enjoy painting, you know, I, I go to classes and I really love it. I do watercolours or I do acrylic or, you know, whatever. Yeah, yeah. Um, you don't have to be a ditto, ditto artist. Right, right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, you don't have to be a chef. Right, to exactly. To enjoy cooking. So yes. You don't have to be an artist, artist to enjoy painting. No, no, so, no. You know, I would say for anyone listening, if somebody asks you to say, well, I re- I enjoy painting and I'm exploring it and discovering, you know, what I can do with it. Yeah. Rather than, oh, well, I, I paint a little bit, but, you know, I'm not very good and I'm just learning. And, you know, we were all amateurs at one time. <laughs> we all started somewhere. Well, of course. <laughs> And I think it's also like saying things about, you know, I'm a human. I'm still learning how to be yeah, a human. Exactly. <laughs> or an adult. Yeah, I'm running human. out of time here. Yeah. <laughs> oh, dear. yeah, I don't know. There's so, something about the label, you know, that we think that if we put that label on our forehead, that there's an expectation that people will want to see, you know, oh, show me what you've done. Show me your work. Yeah. And then all of a sudden you're exposed, you're naked, and you've got someone standing there looking at your artwork and going, oh, okay, that's strange or that's weird or, you know, having yeah. some kind of negative reaction to it. And I think that's obviously what we all fear the most is having a critical, you know, someone making a criticism or not having a comment at all, which is just as bad. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you'd never get that from me, I have to say. Yeah, no, I know. <laughs> you'd always I know, get I know. encouragement from me, whatever. Right. And um and, and that was another interesting thing because um the the lady I was sharing with, um uh, Rosanna, who's actually Spanish, so we had wonderful, interesting span Spanglish conversations. <laughs> right. <laughs> because she I don't speak fluent Spanish and she doesn't speak fluent um English. And she was with her partner, who also loves painting. Okay. And um, he was—he's trying with uh, watercolors. 
so he you know he was kind of sitting there just helping her and he wasn't doing you know a great deal and he bought his his watercolor pad in and his paints and he started doing some sketches from outside this chapel oh, yeah beautiful with the mountains in the back it was really really lovely and um then he started asking me in in sort of spanglish spanish you know what what he could do so i landed up we landed up really having a lesson. Oh, <laughs> oh, wow. And and it was really cool because I was kind of helping him show him how to do, you know, to get his perspective and to get the tone values and see the shapes in the, in the trees and the mountains and the shadows. And um, it was wonderful. We did it, I don't know, for about an hour and a half. And um, we were talking about William Turner, and, mm -hmm. you know, because he's such a the master of masters for watercolor. And uh, so the next day, I took him some uh, um, a, one of my books on Turner mm -hmm. to to show him, you know, because Turner's paintings they can be like, you know, six inches square, yeah, and you can see twenty five miles in the distance. It's yeah, they're just yeah. phenomenal. And to, to be looking at the tones of how he got, gets the distance, you know, the far distance and then the middle distance and the foreground and what he'd done with the colours to, to do that. Yes. And so we had a very interesting Spanglish conversation. <laughs> <laughs> now, did, did you find people were interested in watching you or watching him paint or, you know, as you were standing there with him? Um, that yeah, there were one or two people who came over and had a look what okay. we were doing. Yeah, uh, so that was kind of nice. And then I was thinking that you know next time maybe I would take in an easel and and do something yeah. and paint. I but think then people idea. might feel that they don't want to interrupt you and have a conversation, but it might be a nice conversation icebreaker, you know? Right. Um, yeah. Yeah. So I think, yeah. yeah, I think people do enjoy watching someone else. Um, you know, painting because it gives them the idea of, oh, this is how it happens. This is how all comes together. This is how together. you do it. Yeah. 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 Um, and then I have an, uh, we were talking about light and how to see the darks and how to see the lights, particularly in nature. You know, we weren't talking about abstract painting. We were talking about, you know, realistic painting. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the, the backdrop, of of Frigliana it's just phenomenal because the mountains are amazing and then you know you've got the trees dotted around and it, it's absolutely fabulous and you know you've got these lovely shadow patterns mm. and then you've got the white buildings so you get different tones of color of oh, shadow yes. yes so it I, I have a book called Radiant Color which I used to use a tremendous amount when I was uh, teaching in person and it teaches you to look at um, reflected light and oh, color. Okay. Yeah. So, and there's some examples of what the, what you would call local color. So the grass is green. You know, the tree trunks are brown. The leaves are green. The sky is blue. Shadows are gray. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and that's kind of our perception and our thought of of what it is they of what you're okay. seeing yes yeah of what you think you're seeing right okay but it's a it's a it's a thinking of what you're seeing rather than looking at what you're seeing yeah yeah so when you start to look at what you see you can start to see that very few of the of the shadows are gray mm -hmm. <laughs> the wall isn't gray if you've got the reflection and the the sky is a really sort of beautiful uh, cobalt blue color that's reflecting on the wall yes right so you're going to have blue yes. tones in the shadow and on the trees you know when the light hits the trees it's bright yellow yeah you know? yeah <laughs> yeah it's not they're not green and it's not white on green which is the I the thinking? Oh, it well, it's light, so it must it be must white. be white. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. not. So you start having a look at the, all the reflective colors all around you, mm -hmm. even on the road. So, say there's, say there's a red car, 
and it's casting a shadow onto the road, yeah, you're going to get a, a hint of the red into In shadow. the shadow color. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So when you start analyzing it in that way, you start seeing color in a completely new dimension. It makes and me think fantastic. of when you go when you go to a, a paint shop when you're you know for for house paint. Um, I don't see that here as much, but in Canada, you know, there would be this wall of all these paint chips. You know, these little cardboard, um, mm. you know, samples of all the different yeah. Paints, the colors. Yeah. And it always amazed me how many different whites there were, you know, you could pick from, I don't know, yeah. a dozen at least different kinds of white. And you don't really think about the fact that there are all these different versions of white out there because white is white, right? <laughs> but it's not. Mm. Um, <laughs> it's not. Yeah. yeah. So I think that that's an, kind of an interesting exercise. If you have you know, the option to bring these pat these little chips home and then you can start examining them and saying, OK, well, that one's got more um, yellow in it or that one's got more blue in it. Mm. Or, you know, I think you have to maybe train your eye to see these things, because, as you say, yeah. you know, our mind. just Well, you've got yeah. things like, um, you know, apple white and, and blueberry white and this white and that white, you know, with tints of those colors. Yeah. Yeah. And. But you can see that in nature, you know, even just looking at the, the yellows, you know, you, you can go from a cadmium yellow to a lemon yellow to a pale, pale yellow to a yellow opera because of the light. Mm, mm -hmm. And then you look at the green, <laughs> you know, how many, how many colors of green there are? And there are hundreds of colors of green. Yeah. And then you look at that and those shadows and what those shadows do. Yes. And what color they are and what then what color the earth is. Right. And um, I think what I was really happy about with 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 working with Carlos on this, you know, little watercolor, he was kind of going he was so excited because he realized that if he started playing around with this, how much more life he would bring to his paintings okay of course yeah yeah you know to bring the depth suddenly they, yeah. come, they come alive yeah you know? yeah and um the, you know with watercolor sometimes and i mean i've done it myself in the past you can just leave the the paper for the white yes true in, instead of painting the white you know yeah most i think watercolor artists but, do that don't they yeah yeah but if you added you know that those tints that you were saying about the different color whites mm. for the reflection how much more alive it is because otherwise it tends to stay flat true yeah you know yeah so it's flat yes, it's not, yes you're not getting any anything from it well there's nothing that hasn't got light on it, whether it's shadow light or whether it's light light. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so there's going to be some reflective color of some kind. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it, it's fascinating. And then if you translated that into abstract painting, you know, if you've got that, if you've got that knowledge of um, how those colors work and seeing those, and you can introduce those into abstract painting um in a different way again it adds a new dimension yes so. <laughs> yeah i mean really, because really, even really, in abstract uh, you know really. you want to give that um that idea of dimension don't you you know things that are in the uh, background and the, the background yeah. and so on yeah 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 yeah, yeah, yeah and yeah. by using all these different shades yeah. and adding the light and the dark obviously you know gives that impression of 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 dimension yeah. dimensionality Mm. yeah so it's an interesting exercise to be outside and to squint your eyes and re and look at something even whether it's a tree whether it's a building whether it's even a person I mean mm. you know looking at you for example if I was going to start to do a portrait you've got your you know your pink top on red to pink top that is going to that is reflecting on on your face yes both right. in shadow and light yes right yes yeah <laughs> so 
when you start to see that, you know, you throw out flesh color. <laughs> right. Yeah. Because you you you've got other color in there that you know on both sides of you because mm -hmm. you've got you know in shadow that side what's lighter on one side, side so than the got, other well yeah. your cheekbone is here you've got you've got a, a glow of the mm. pink of your top yeah 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 i see what you mean yeah <laughs> and whatever 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 other colors are surrounding yeah. you <laughs> yeah 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 <laughs> um <laughs> so as an exercise as a chat you know to challenge yourself to actually maybe even exaggerate the, the reflected color. Yeah. On something. Right. You know, just take take something, a tree or a bush or a building or a person or whatever. It doesn't matter what it is. Mm -hmm. It could be a glass jars on a on, on a table. It doesn't matter. But deliberately look at the other colors that are around you. Right. And yeah. see the reflect the reflective color in that those shadows and in those lights yes and the learning curve on that will be really interesting yeah i guess i don't know i mean you know you've been doing this for so long obviously your eye is naturally trained to see these colors and i don't know whether the rest of us who have not really you know learned to look at it that way can see it as easily mm -hmm. as you do is there a trick that you can give us. I mean, yeah, the trick is to squinting. The, the, the trick is to is to squint your eyes. To squint your eyes. First okay. of all, if you're looking at something, look, blink, and open. Mm, okay. Right, because right. then you, yeah. you you take a yeah you take away then the image. Oh you yes. You're not looking at the image. Right. You're looking at color. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So, if I'm kind of must look really weird <laughs> but open close open yeah. close right yeah. as soon as I'm doing this I see I see a deep lovely deep purple down the side of your nose okay right? yeah <laughs> because I'm not concentrating on your face I'm concentrating yeah. on color right right and then if you kind of just squint your eyes so you go a bit blurry mm. yeah right? then it everything is the color of the rainbow everything why well, how come we get the yeah how come we get the you know when that when that the sun is there on 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 rain we get the rainbow yeah right yeah. just because we don't see the rainbow doesn't say that it's not there no of course <laughs> it's because our eyes can't perceive it yeah can't can't see it yeah so if we imagine that to start with mm. and that in our mind that we've got the colors of the rainbow everywhere in everything yeah right? yeah <laughs> So you can exaggerate it. You could make this really dark purple. You could make this really dark pink. Yes, yes. Right? You've got you've got this kind of greeny gold in the back of you in your curtains. Right. You could bring that out. Yeah, yeah. So you you kind of exaggerate everything. And as you're looking, the more you do it, the more you learn how to see it. I mean, it I do remember when I first came across this this um sorry when i first came to understanding this it took me quite some time to go out and say okay what color is that really yeah 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 <laughs> is that it, shadow it, gray is it blue is it purple oh you know what <laughs> is it also helpful i mean i know you can't do it when you're looking in when you're out in nature but if you were looking at an image a photograph or something of a tree, mm. whatever, if you flipped it upside down so that your eyes not no longer recognizing it as a tree, but just all these different trees and yeah. colors, you might be yes. able to pick it out more easily, do you think? The different the different colors. Uh, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. You see, you want you want to get away from thinking that you know what it is. Right, right. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. So rather than projecting onto what you think it is yes yeah Re reversing that so you're looking to see what it is yeah without thinking that you know what it is yeah that's the whole so principle kind of behind an that book isn't it drawing on the right yes. side of the brain yeah side of the brain exactly yeah. and yeah. with reflective color what you're looking at you want to look at not with the thought that you know what it is Yes, yes. So you kind of, you know, scratch that, scratch that and yeah. look at it, you know. <laughs> yeah. 
look at it without the the thinking that you know that it, what it is. Yeah, it's almost so like you're taking, off a pair, you're taking off the glasses or you're putting on different glasses or something and you're looking at it. Exactly. From a different, exactly. uh, a whole different lens. Yes. A, a whole different thing. Yeah. 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 And it's just reminded me of something. I don't know whether I'm allowed to say this on YouTube. I'll say it anyway. <laughs> <laughs> it's a little bit of if the psychogenics. Okay. okay. Yeah. With psychogenics, that, that part of your brain of thinking what it knows, what it sees kind of goes out oh do you mean the, like a, the, the others oh sorry do you mean the psychedelic psych psychedelics yes psychedelics, okay. psychedelics. Yeah. yeah psychedelics so that kind of part of your linear brain yeah it's it's kind suppressed. of goes yeah. to one side suppressed yeah, yeah, yeah. And something else comes forward and when you actually think of say the revolution in music mm. as a good example um one of the things that kind of comes to my mind is remember well like maybe some of you don't but i i remember the beatles when oh, they God. first came out the music yeah. that they were making yeah and then they then they went off to india mm -hmm. remember and they yeah. they they, yeah. they 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 sergeant peppers right uh, album and everything was kind of psychedelic and lucy in the sky with diamonds and yellow submarine and all those crazy crazy um things yeah but it was like someone had taken taken the lid off and allowed that creativity to 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 come through in their music mm -hmm. you know that was the, completely from, different you know, from what love me do song. and all those yeah yeah, yeah you know yeah. those first songs through the spectrum to the songs that they landed up you know that made after that um trip Yes, uh, it, it was like two ends of the spectrum. Yeah, it was incredible. So you start to see things very differently. I, I mean, I'm not saying go and get high on magic mushrooms or something. <laughs> <laughs> and and but <laughs> I think a really interesting way of of, of getting there is through meditation mm. or by sitting and just looking. You know, sometimes meditation you can do by just um, sitting in front of a candle right yes and in and you your mind goes into a different space and it's literally from as I've always said I know it's not um, biologically correct but the left side to the right side of the yeah brain. no no I mean yeah you know you, you, you can't get to that space thinking it doesn't happen in thinking it happens in allowing mm -hmm. and uh, letting yourself experience the experience of it right without Obviously, judging it or or trying to analyze yes it. yeah yes yeah. without thinking the should must and ought be you know the the, the tree should be green mm. and the, the 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 sky should be blue although it might be gray or although it might be full of clouds what color are the clouds <laughs> well but you know in actual yeah. fact i mean the way that we perceive color is just um the way that your brain processes um a wavelength that's coming in through your eyeball right and it just exactly we perceive yeah. it as a color uh green or blue or red and then you have people who are mm. colorblind who obviously don't have the ability to perceive those colors because of a yes. um, genetic, um, you know, uh, mutation, I guess you would say, in their yes. in their retina, yeah, yeah. in their in their eye, that they cannot mm. process. Mm. Their brain cannot see those colors or distinguish those mm. colors one from the other. Um, so yeah, it's all in yeah. anyway. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. So um, you know, I think it's first of all, kind of meditate on that principle that everything is a rainbow yeah 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 even even feeding that thought into your mind gives you a different perspective right yeah right yeah and then try to stop yourself thinking that you know what it is yeah and rather let it tell you what it is it's kind of the it's kind of an uh, analogous to you know we call ourselves living in the digital world, right? Because we're surrounded by technology, which is driven by um, digital processing, ones and zeros, you know, this is how computers work. And 
Mm. It's it's an on or off, you know, switch basically that 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 drives everything that we're doing, the way that we're recording this podcast, our telephones, everything, you know, all of our household appliances yeah. probably at this point. But so much of the world is not digital. You know, color isn't digital. It can be made digital. You know, you can convert yeah, yeah, yeah. it into a digital um, signal, but out in nature, it's not digital. As you say, you know, there's an infinite variety mm-hmm. of uh, versions of green and blue and red and yellow and so on. Um, and I don't actually know, but again, you know, going back to the way that the brain um, perceives those differences in color, I don't know, you know, mm. I think maybe it's a training that we can do, as you said, you know, to kind of sensitize your eye and your ability to, you know, be able to see the difference between this white and that white and know what the difference is, you know, is it because it's got more yellow or blue yes. or whatever in it, or mm. is there something else going on? So it's um it's yeah. an interesting exercise because yeah i mean just to think of the concept of it not being one this or that it's it's all of it but there's there's all these infinite variations in between you know that um absolutely that we're not aware absolutely of absolutely right yeah. yeah 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 and actually when i'm thinking about you know going back to the people looking at the paintings and what we're looking at um we're not educated to see that way. No, we're not. Exactly. And we're not. We, so if we don't know, we don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Right. <laughs> and, um, it's only if if we make a decision to become aware. Mm-hmm. First of all, aware that we don't know. Yeah. We don't know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's a so first step. We, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Which is a bit of a contradictory in terms, because if we start to become aware of it, we start to know. <laughs> to an extent yeah right right yes yes so if if first of all we say well i'm i'm this is like learning to walk right we 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 kind of have to grab onto something and pull ourselves up and we go oh you know yeah we're, we're on our feet now and then we start our first few steps and then suddenly you know we're off and away so if we kind of think about it in the same way mm. that the the first thing is to grab something so the idea that everything is a rainbow that's yeah. kind of what we want to have our first thought with and then you know even paint yourself a rainbow <laughs> just so you know the colors mm. and then maybe blend the colors so instead of just having you know the colors in stripes, in yeah. stripes yeah. then blend one color into, into another the, yeah. into another into another so you you start to give that physical doing of it it starts to embed it in your mind Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so you start to become aware of it then when you're looking how does where is that in my rainbow right yeah yeah right yeah but if you actually paint it draw it with crayons or whatever but I would suggest painting it in anything you do it in watercolor you do it in acrylic oil whatever but then you, and you started blending it you start to embed that idea into your body yeah so it becomes it's not just a a concept of a thought yeah it starts to to absorb become a reality yes yes become a reality and then yeah. start thinking how um now when i'm looking at something where is that in my color spectrum mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and how how does that feel so you know you 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 hold on you stand up <laughs> yeah you 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 paint yourself that it's like familiarizing yourself with the color wheel you yeah know? yeah how do, yeah. how do you know what your opposite colors are well paint yourself a color wheel and find out so it embeds it to you so you you know so this is a similar similar exercise and then start give yourself 5 minutes just to look at something and say, okay, I mean, I'm looking outside my window, I've got a big ivy bush, and then some trees, and um, the sky, and the, the, the sun shining on it. So there's so many different colours of greens, of yellows, of blues, of, of oh, look at that, you know, um, all different beigey colours. Yeah, uh, fantastic. You could just take like an inch of it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> 
and find, you know, a dozen colors in it. <laughs> and in five minutes, it'll be completely different because the sun will have moved. The sun will have changed. And you've got a different yeah. set of shadows mm. and a different quality of light. Yeah, yeah. 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 It's really, really cool. So that that that's a really good start to looking. Mm. And then you go from not knowing to, to begin to know, and that starts a momentum. And it, it's intriguing and... Um, you know, you start getting, it's mysterious. You start wanting to know more and wanting to know more. And suddenly you're starting to say, oh my God, you know, that white wall isn't white at all. It's got <laughs> yeah. like, it's got like crimson and it's got lilac and it's got, you know, very soft green on it because the light from the, from the um, bush opposite is throwing green on there. Yeah, yes, yes, <laughs> yes, 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 yeah. You know? Yeah, yeah. And that's so just, just being open to the idea that, that there's more to it than what you can see, literally. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 And to train yourself to do it. Yeah. Squint your eyes, <laughs> you know, go from, I'm not, I don't think I know what it is. It's going to tell me what it is. Mm. So you. It's coming into you rather yeah. than you projecting onto it. I wonder if and people, then, you know, people who can see auras, you know, people who have this ability to see yeah. um, around you, you know, colors and shapes and whatever. I think that's really fascinating because, again, I think they've somehow trained themselves or they were born with this gift, you know, whether you believe it or not. But in, in their experience, they're seeing something that you and I don't see right mm -hmm. and um and it and it's meaningful you know they they attribute a meaning to it you know everybody maybe has a different interpretation mm. of what you know an orange aura looks like or what it means about you and so on but <clears throat> it's again mm. i think just a different perception it's a different way of perceiving you know just what's uh what's what's in the air almost you know what's kind of like yeah. around you yeah but but at the same time, you could say, OK, we might not necessarily see the aura of the, of the person, but we can get the feeling of the person. Mm, yeah. Indeed. And, um, you know, going back to the exhibition thing, there are some people who um, <laughs> I would say, hi, how are you? Are you enjoying the are you enjoying the art walk? You know, yeah. Where, where have, you, have you just started? Have you seen other things? And some people would automatically engage mm -hmm. hi some people wouldn't even acknowledge that i'd said anything really yeah wow and so the energy around people you you know you can pick up the energy of of people without even with no thought and yes. some people you're drawn towards and some people you're absolutely not yeah which is a similar thing it's a similar thing to the or to True. seeing an aura yeah and um, somebody came in later on yesterday afternoon, uh, a Spanish woman, and uh, sometimes Spanish speak very, very loudly. Mm, mm. <laughs> they don't. They don't have a conversation. They come on the phone and they rah, 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 and you come. Oh, God. And and because we're in this chapel, it's really echoey. Yeah, right. So uh, this loud voice, this woman on this phone, was like. <laughs> like all over this the the the, the place and yeah. i kind of looked at she her. filled up the space yeah she filled up the whole space and it, everyone kind of was like oh <laughs> what's this noise oh, and dear. i kind of looked at her and just went you know i wasn't rude or anything but just to kind of oh did you her. kind she of no her. awareness yeah. yeah yeah no awareness at all that she'd had this effect on on the whole space now oh god you know echoing around i mean it's you know huge big very yes. very uh, high ceiling and it yeah. just kind of echoed the acoustics <laughs> like <"What?" laughs> the place sort of erupted <laughs> <laughs> but she had no concept that of of of, of doing that but there was like this energy that kind of exploded from her that everybody felt <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> to say get the hell out of here you know yeah you're yeah not, well you're not welcome in here shouting <laughs> <laughs> don't shout outside on your phone yeah but oh, you yeah. know that you, there's some people that naturally you just respond to and some people that you naturally don't 
And I did, you know, I would say hi. Mm. Blank. Mm. And other people, oh, hi, how mm. are you? You know, this is yeah. great or whatever. Yeah. So um, um, maybe, yeah, you can put that into color. I could put this loud woman into color. You yes. know? <laughs> <laughs> what color would she be, Joy? <laughs> red? Well, she'd definitely be red and yeah, fire yeah. and like well, black as well. I think oh, that would dear. be such an interesting exercise if, if um, you know, you kind of painted uh, an image of someone that you know, you know, in a color, just what you think their color is. Uh, it doesn't yes. have to be a real image, you know, or a figure, but just sort of your impression of what this person of, is like yes. from yeah. an energy yeah, perspective yeah, yeah. and uh, see what you come up with. I'm not with, yeah. Well, there was an actually there's an exercise that I used to do with clients with when I was doing the art therapy, and um, I'd ask them to lie down and just feel about what they felt was the color of their head. Oh, okay. And then what color they felt was the was the color of their body. Yeah. And then that their arms and their legs, and to you know just feel about it and then obviously get up and just paint the colors that they okay. they felt about themselves right it was right. a really interesting exercise <laughs> did you find um, most people had a drastically different color scheme very different yeah really yeah yeah, yeah. interesting totally. so say for example say they did a blue head just off the top of my head off the top of my head yeah right <laughs> <laughs> you know why do you feel you had a blue head? Yes, yes, interesting. <laughs> Why do you feel you had a yellow hand or yeah, whatever yeah. it might be? You know, it's it, it, it's fascinating because it re it connects you to something that is there, but you're you're not necessarily aware of it, and how you can explore those possibilities within yourself. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah and maybe there's no real kind of logic behind it it's just a feeling as you say it's just a feeling yeah, yeah it's right. a feeling yeah. yeah um and then how do you feel about the leaf what color would would you does it feel to you you know what color does the light feel to you mm -hmm. it's mm -hmm. really so interesting what i might do i'll i'll i'll, I'll i'm saying it now in in my book, the radiator, the 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 color, um, the color book. Yes, I've yes. got I've got I think it's six examples of local color, the same painting, the same picture, of what it looks like in local color, what it looks like in color theory, mm. what it looks like in expressive color, what it looks like in symbolic color. And then what it looks like in radiating color. Okay. In reflect in reflective color. Yeah. And it's the same image. And then how you can interpret it differently. And that's an interesting exercise okay. to do oneself. Yeah. You know, to do it local color, right? You know, green leaves, blue sky, brown earth, you know, dark brown tree trunk. <laughs> Are you gonna do <laughs> a video? Are you gonna do a video on that? I could, yeah, I actually, I would do. I think yeah. that would be a really interesting exercise. I think so too. Um, and and then to see how, how you feel about it and to see how you do the reflective colour. Mm. And I'll, ref I'll reference the book because it's, a, you know, if you're into doing landscapes particularly or, or still life, that kind of thing, but even also for, for abstracted. Yeah. To know how that works, um gives your paintings and yourself a new dimension of of looking and being able to express yourself all right okay well that would really be fascinating yeah. i'd love to see that yeah excellent yeah. okay okay great well we cool. started talking about the exhibit and ended up talking about color theory but that's fine <laughs> <laughs> well it's kind of it's it's the it's it, it's really try to find to be more enlightened to yourself to ourselves you know yes. to be more aware yes. because it was blatantly obvious to me over the whole weekend that the wandering spirit is paramount mm. <laughs> mm. rather than the focus spirit yeah if you see what I mean yeah and 
the, the wandering spirit, something had taken those people there for all whatever reasons, you know, a lovely afternoon out, a nice thing to go and do, and go and have lunch, have a drink, enjoy. It really had nothing to do with the art. It was just an extra yeah. entertainment. It was a side sideline entertainment. Yeah. 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 And then, you know, the people then who were actually interested in maybe buying something. And then those artists who wanted to come and see what other artists were doing to get inspiration, um, you know, meet other artists and have nice conversations. So, you know, everyone has their different motivations. But I would say the majority were just wandering spirits. Yeah. Just who were interested in art. <laughs> But you know what? I, I wouldn't discount them. Not I mean, not in the sense. No, that I don't at all. It, it, there's still a value. I'm not saying that. that but it, 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 it was interesting to see yeah. how they observed they, or didn't yeah. observe. No, yeah. I was just going to say that, you know, in spite of the fact that they only kind of, you know, came through and spent a very short amount of time, you never know mm -hmm. what the impact might be on them later. You know, because sometimes, and it happens to me sometimes, is that, <laughs> I'll see something or um, hear something or whatever. And it mm. takes about a day for me to kind of uh, digest, you know, it's, it's in my subconscious. And then mm. I suddenly start to think about it and it, and I realize something about it and you know what I mean? It, it, it could be a slow process for someone to, to have seen your artwork or anybody else's artwork for that matter. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. then kind of have a reaction to it and go, oh, I really yes. do like that. You know, maybe I'll yeah. contact, you know, they, they might have, had, you know, a leaflet. With yeah, you never know. Them. Yeah, no, exactly. exactly. Yeah, you never know. That's right. And I mean, I gave out, I gave out a lot of cards. I made all my own cards and I made bookmarks. Yeah. So I'd, I'd printed them and then I stuck them on watercolor paper. Okay. And then I cut them. And then put my information on the back. You know, I think I did a little thing on that a while ago. Yes. And so, and everybody loved those. Oh, that's so great. That I that I talk to. Yeah. And um, um, you know, they so, and they could choose what they which what which picture they wanted because they were all pictures of um, they were all pictures from the exhibition. So you know, like this this little card. Oh, nice. Put, yeah. Concert, on the back the yeah, yeah on the back <laughs> um and um so yeah you never know well you, you know I, know I would bet you anything you're going to get some interest from people who were just yeah. walking by but now you know a few yeah. days later they've suddenly decided they want to know more or they want to maybe sign up for some lessons or something exactly yeah yeah, yeah so, cool um yeah it was lovely and it was very very really sort of fun interesting an inspiring few days oh and, that's great that's great uh, met lots of nice people and you know met a lot of the other artists and we all chatted about art stuff so that was great so now so, it's back to normal life whatever that means <laughs> well, whatever that is yeah. <laughs> yeah I mean um you know I can I've now got to concentrate on on other things I'm just starting a new master class for the group right right and um I'm just deciding on where I will go with that lovely um, I might do something on this color thing actually. well yeah I know you just did a yeah. master class on color but this might be part two yeah. or something yeah yeah it could be about seeing color yeah I think that'd be than, really interesting you know, yeah. rather than the color mixing about what colors you see and I do feel that doing the rainbow actually is a really good idea mm -hmm. as a, a, as a benchmark, if you like. Yeah, you know, like we have the, we have the gray scale to measure our color values. Right. Um, if you had a, a rainbow scale, <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, that might be really interesting. Yeah. yeah why well, not? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Great. So we'll see. I'll, I'll, I will arrive at that in the next couple of days once I've sorted myself out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Take time to, to land and settle again. Yeah. yeah. Good. Well, interesting conversation yet again. Yeah. Yes, thank you, yes. Thank you very much. Oh, yeah. well, thank you. Yes, lovely to hear about your, your experience and, and um, you know, mm -hmm. what you've learned from it and so on. And uh, we look forward. Yeah. I'm sure it'll look, it'll come back again in other discussions that we have. Um, in yeah. Terms of, yeah.
So if, if people want to have a look at the paintings, they're on my website. Yeah. At uh, joyfayartist.com. And also, I, d I will just mention, um, I've done a calendar for 2024 oh, right. of all the pictures. Um, so there's 12 paintings in the calendar. Um, and so that's now I've got, I've opened a new little shop on my website oh great and um so you can get the calendar of the, if you like the paintings it's oh nice. that sounds like nice. a nice christmas gift actually it, oh yeah i was yeah. gonna say it's nice for a present right and um yeah the, I, I i've only had one printed myself because i wanted to check the color was okay because mm. you never know with mm. those prints whether mm. the color's going to come out all right but i'm really i'm really happy with it and i ordered it on the monday and I got it on the Friday. Oh, so it came great. really quickly. Yeah. And it came from the States, in fact, oh. to Spain. So in if you're in the States, it's going to come Maybe even faster. Yeah. Quicker. Yeah. Yeah. yeah maybe yeah. you could put a link directly to the calendar. I will. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that'd will. be a good idea. I can do okay. that. Lovely. Uh, so that's cool. Plus all the other links. Yeah. The mini course and the um the uh membership. Yeah. And then your your lovely website. Yeah. On Facebook yeah and so we're accessible and if you've got any thoughts particularly on what we've been talking about in relationship to color you know how are you seeing color it would be lovely to hear your comments about that and um you know if you want more of the same of this some interesting conversations that notif notification bell is waiting <laughs> to be hit <laughs> And sure it says, hit me now. Hit me now. <laughs> <laughs> With your rhythm stick. <laughs> cool. Okay. okay, well, have a great week. Thank and, you. Um, too. Catch up soon. Thank you, everybody, for listening. And uh, happy painting. Yes. <laughs> happy yes, looking. Yes. Happy seeing. <laughs> yeah. Okay, dear. Thank you very much. Okay. Talk to you later. All righty. Lots Bye. of love. Thanks. Bye. Bye.